issues that 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 um I know Rich is interesting. We were both both talking about earlier on. Um uh one is yeah, you know, just how you felt about uh it wasn't just them being covered, it was about the, the racist being put under the recent Winston's to uh, Churchill statue, sorry. Um and um oh the second thing you mentioned, I'm sorry, I forgot what the second thing you mentioned was now. It's gone from me. Um it escapes yeah. me. Sorry, it will it will come. I know it will kick back as soon as someone starts talking. Then I'll have to sit and wait. Um, but it was anyway. Re regarding the, the, the statues and um, and how you felt about that, and I was I was just going to say sorry. That was just going to say that um, Richard, this is something something that that uh, you want to talk about as well, isn't it? Well, I mean, I think that the whole the whole issue of of, of so called Black Lives I'm being Matter. torn down, by the way. Yeah, sorry. I'm talking about statues here, or Black Lives Matter in general? Or just, uh, sta the, 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 the statues. Um, um, Amory was saying. I was saying to Amory that 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 uh, you know Boris had, had maybe uh, spent his uh, uh, Lent vote, and uh, Amory was saying. Um, that you know we we thought with Boris in office that that just down the road from you you'd never imagine that the the statues would be would be covered uh what in it, the way that they have been what it's shown is that, that you know and 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 i i said this before boris got elected i says you can never trust a tory and anyone in the northeast of england knows that you can't trust a tory and that's why i'm a in pole position to get that seat in hartlepool <laughs> in four years time but um the, the reality is that this tory party are the weakest most pathetic limp-wristed uh, bunch of tories i've ever seen in my life um <laughs> But That's one way of putting it, yeah. Yeah, for, for, for that is one say, way of putting it. Well, well, think about it this way: when when when, the, when that riotous mob was throwing things over the over the, over the wall of Downing Street, mm. you know, like they were trying to storm the Bastille the week before, um, patriots like Anne Marie and and um, the veterans went to went to 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 signify their disgust at the way that the cenotaph had been desecrated, um, and and the week before you had. Rioters throwing things over the over the 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 the, the, the railings at, at Downing Street without anybody stopping them, and then um, a week later, veterans are threatened with arrest for wanting to go and defend the cenotaph. That shows that the, the Conservative Party are actually the Conservative and Communist Party of the United Kingdom. Yeah, yeah. There's no difference between you know between um, Blair and Cameron and Starmer and Johnson. They are all globalist elitists who don't care about the people i mean they've spent 370 billion um paying us all to sit at home and do nothing while they've panicked about covid and then boris announces a massive bailout of five billion pounds well that's going to go a really long way in hartlepool isn't it you know what's hartlepool going to get one 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 piece of one railway sleeper maybe for that five billion uh, billion pounds and they need to be called out and it continue and that's why it's so important that we've got alternative political voices that are brave enough to say we're not going to put up with this anymore, and we, we're going to we're going to stand against these people. And that's what they fear the most. They fear losing votes, and that's absolutely, that's absolutely. It's, I always say it, it. It's got to be political. There's there's room in this for a variety of different attacks. It's information like this. We need to do this. We need to do our marches. Marches and things are important. They really are. But if there's no one, the power is at the ballot box because they're the ones who make the decisions. And when the Labour Party goes to review statues and street names and memorials all over the country that's local government we need to be there shouting from the rooftops and not letting them get away with anything absolutely we must make them commit that there won't be for example any books removed from libraries we should be taking this to local councils now asking for security for our statues and a guarantee that our libraries won't because libraries will be next they will be next. And also, if I I would I really want to put Edward Colston's statue back up. I had no idea who Edward Colston was. Uh, and frankly, it's, I, I'm not sure what his role in the slave trade was because the BBC is a liar. But regardless, right. that statue needs to go back up. It really, really does. It's very important. Um, we've, got, I mean, we've got to be there at the local level challenging this. This is a huge issue, huge issue. It's interesting, I, isn't it? When the globalists went into Iraq, the first thing that the rioting mob did was rip down a statue of Saddam Hussein, who was obviously a tyrant. And it was it was 
it was exactly the same. The globalists are now coming into into the United Kingdom to stop us getting Brexit, to stop us getting our sovereignty back, and the baying mob are doing exactly what the global. You see, this is the this is the myth. The, these young people that have been radicalized by the, these baying leftists don't realize that what they're doing is fighting for the existing order. They're fighting to defend the existing order. When I was a kid, you used to fight against the existing order. You didn't fight for them. But these young kids don't realize that the Metropolitan Police support what they're doing. No doubt Cressida Dick supports what they're doing. Um, Baz Javid, the, 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 the brother of Home Secretary Sajid Javid, supports what they're doing. And this is what people have got to realize that the, the the reality of the situation is they are the antifa are the the foot soldiers of the establishment and the sooner young people realize that and start supporting us who are the real freedom fighters who are trying to do things for genuine equality and genuine freedom and genuine sovereignty the better but it's been appalling what's happened in the us and in the uk in the last, the last three weeks yeah that's you're absolutely right but we are the rebels now we are the rebels. We are the ones that are standing up to the machine. And these young kids, they think they think that they are opposing. They think they're on the side of justice. They think they're up against a massive big enemy. They're complicit. They're absolutely, and they don't even realize what they're complicit in. They are essentially, yeah, yeah. They think they're communists. They really do. But they're yeah. running an open border globalism that is based on huge mega corporates. <laughs> you know, this is not the working class. They are actually doing the duty for big international corporations. They are working for the man. They're not opposing the man. Now we are the rebels. We're the outsider now. We're the ones standing up for free speech. We're the ones standing up for the dissident view and demanding the truth from a system that is oppressing us. And it is oppression. Um, and these kids are so confused, but it's part of the upside down world we're living in, isn't it? I mean, if you want to treat black and white people the same, you're a racist. We're, we're living, you know, you have to divide black and white now to be an anti-racist. You know, it's crazy. It's a complete over-conversation. Have you seen that one? What's you that? Want, the... uh, Keir Starmer wants black shortlists in the Labour Party. You know, this is where we're going. Uh, and, and I I believe it's a deliberate plot by the establishment um, because the establishment, you know, we were talking about this last night, that this whole idea of the slow march through the institutions. Oh. We have, we are, what you said is absolutely right, Anne-Marie. We are the resistance. We are exactly the same as dissidents in communist Russia yes. in, in the 1970s and the 1980s. And the more power these people get, the more they will oppress us. We've seen it with Tommy getting in prison time and time again. They will come for all of us, and we've said that time and time again. They might start with Tommy, but they they will they will move in, and they will. Any of us that are speaking out are going to be oppressed. I was saying to Tom last night, it'd be very difficult for me to go and get a job in in media and advertising. I've worked in that that industry for for twenty years. It'd be very difficult for me to go and get a new job now, um, because all somebody's got to do is Google Richard Inman, and you find yeah. newspaper stories calling me an Islamophobic. Um, hate, you know, hate-filled bigot, and that's that's exactly what they've, you know, what they've managed to achieve. They control absolutely everything, and our fight back must be political. But we must use every other legal means, like the, the, these absolutely. these forms of media. Absolutely. And what we're doing tonight is absolutely vital. And I mean, True. it takes a lot of our personal time up. It takes a lot of our effort and a lot of energy. But it's so so important that we that we do this. Can I just say about about the local le level? Um, the one the one thing to bring it all back down to earth to come down to that that local level because elections are won by lo you know local levels so um the 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 one bit of and i'm beginning to see part of it as a cop out now but the one thing people say is you can't beat the di can't defeat the establishment can't replace the establishment if you was to beat them at the ballot box you wouldn't win if if you to get into power you have to be like them we hear all these arguments so and it, i think in some people's cases really is an excuse not to just get involved but uh, i'm beginning to see it more and more as an excuse it's a cop-out i see i see that more and more now but nevertheless i think there are some people that are genuinely just disillusioned and they want to vote you can i've, I've spoke to amory by the way I've got to tell you, feedback from last time was I can't. I had a lot of emails and I can't quote them because they 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 had a lot of uh, bad language in. But <laughs> but it was along the lines of, please don't fucking change. 
Oh. <laughs> um, I'm guessing it wasn't fecking. <laughs> that's Father, that's Father Tedism. Father Ted. Father Tedism. And, um, and uh, yeah, that was pretty much it. Don't change that. And if, uh, if you do get near power, don't become one of them. That was, that was the biggest message. Um, and people, people, oh, the other, one of the biggest messages a, a couple of people said to me was that they'd never voted in their life and um, that the, you'd, what did they say? What was the exact words? Um, you've made a believer out of them and they, want, they wanted to be at the ballot box. Now, whether they truly turn up at the ballot box, but nevertheless, they, they had no reason to say it to me. So, so just a little bit of feedback because I meant, I meant to tell you that at the beginning of the show. So I'm sorry, I, I cut in there. So at the, but at the local level, how do you engage those people that might be sat on the fence and, and, and across the, across the country? How do we get those people that are, that are well, stuck? I think, I think basically it's, 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 it's old fashioned methods. And and the lads just further north of Amory, up in up in the northeast, when we when we did what we did with um, our failed attempt to take over UKIP, uh, when when we did that in two thousand eighteen, we got I think four or five local councillors up in um, Durham who are now creating absolute havoc, and they did it because they knew the the people. It wasn't because of UKIP; it was because they were they were local lads, they were working class lads. And they knew the people in the local area. They got out, they knocked doors, they delivered leaflets, and it worked. So that can that can be replicated right the way across the country for For Britain. And it's like I say, everybody, everybody, you know, it was my fault, the UKIP thing. It was, it, it, it was, we learned a lot from it. But I think it was a dry run for For Britain. Because the reality is, we got thousands of people to join UKIP. Now, those people are still out there. They're still disenfranchised. They're still frustrated. Things are going to get worse and worse. And it's like I keep saying, we've got in For Britain a party, and, and I, I don't just know Anne Marie, I know other people in, in, in For Britain. We've got a political party there that is doing what it says on the tin. What it says in its, man, in its manifesto, it will carry out. And its manifesto is uncompromised. Oh, by Richard McC Catching it a while, <laughs> but in, 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 he was, in, just as he was praising us as well. <laughs> it was GCHQ again, will it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But in in your, I mean, your manifesto is something that that that's a lot. The thing that a lot of other people have said is is like, will she really do the things one well, if, if if given given the opportunity? I mean, it's like they can't. But, because you're coming across like what I hope and believe that you are one of us, and it's like we're just not used to it. We're just not used to it. Well, so that's why like, nobody trusts you. And you know, when you go, when I knock on a door and say, and people say, yeah. oh, I've had enough of the lot of you, I'd say, Well, so have I. You know, they'll say, I'm sick of politicians, I'm sick of politics, but well, so am I. I remember getting into, I won't call it an argument, a, a Robust debate with a lady at a jar once. And I said, Look, are you? She said, But you're all the same. Nothing's going to change. Said, but if that's your attitude, it's a self fulfilling prophecy, isn't it? If we are, if, and, and life is actually a self fulfilling prophecy, what we decide we can do is what we end up doing. So yeah. if we decide, and it's, uh, you know, it's not fanciful, it's actually how it works. You've got to believe in something in order to make it happen. And it's very difficult to believe in things because you get punches and you get wounded and you get knocked down and you have to keep getting back up again. But in all honesty, to me, there is, what else is there? What, re, genuinely, what else is there? You know, we're here one time. This is really how I see it. It's pretty much where I get a sense of fearlessness from is I'm here once, I've got to do something worthwhile. Uh, there, I can see, I, I love this country. I can see it's in trouble. So what am I going to do with my life? I can either, uh, you know, scrape by a living and it, or I can I can stand up and do something that means something to me. I think, you know, I would consider having I, I would consider almost having wasted my time if I didn't do something. So the idea that I would go through all this only to back down when the time comes. Is, is absurd to me. Uh, you know, this is what it's all about. It's about doing what needs to be done and a purpose, a purpose for this sliver of light in terms of time that we're here, make something. Because Britain's been here for 1,000, 1,500, 1,600 years. 
We're here for a click of a finger. Let's make our mark and keep Britain, Britain for the next people to come. And that's how I see it. So the idea I would ever do a backpedal is unthinkable to me. Unthinkable. You know what I think it is? You know, I honestly think it is. It's whether they're on YouTube watching this screen. I say they, I mean audience members and people watching, you know, whether, whether they be watching on YouTube, Sky News or wherever else. I think what it is is, and this is almost funny, but I think that they can't see the difference. And I don't mean even politics or, or um, personality wise, but they don't see the difference in other things between, say, yourself and, say, Mr. Farage. Um, and uh, obviously, none of my business know your bank details, but my point being is, <laughs> Mr. Farage. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Farage, uh, well, 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 I've hacked into not a few of them. But... There. There's not much in there. Very but Mr. Farage is doing all right for himself. And, yeah, and, sure he is. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and so I, and I think there's, I think that that means a lot to the working class to understand that, that someone sort of understands where they're coming from. And I think, I think on the screen, there's no way that you can, can reflect that. So. But obviously, people who come on here and whatever, I mean, they're educated people. This audience is the best audience on, on YouTube. <laughs> sure. But, uh, but, but you know. I think, I, I, but they I, are, actually. I know a lot of them. Yeah. I, I exactly. Think, I think the reality is that all people have to do is go on the For Britain website and, and, and look at what the policies are. And there's nothing unreasonable. There's nothing unreasonable in anything that, that any of us in this movement are saying. But especially when you look at those policies and you look at the way they're formulated, that they're coherent. They're, there's nothing extreme about them. Quite the opposite. The, the whole point of, of of for Britain and the, the the wider movement is to diffuse extremism and to stop extremism yeah. being hold in this country. Whether it's far left, far you know, far right, right supremacists or Islamic extremism. And no no other party is dealing with these issues. There's nobody dealing with the left. The Conservative Party are more or less bowing the knee to the left. I mean, I was honestly when I saw. When I saw Bumbling Boris in the press up position, I thought, has he has he fallen over when he was taking the knee? Is that why he's doing the press up? You know, but um, <laughs> you know, it, it, it wouldn't surprise me if 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 you had Tories taking the knee. Um, and, and oh, yeah. Back. But no. yeah, I mean, and that's the difference. That is the the big difference. We we need authentic people with integrity doing what they say, and that's that's what it's all about at the end of the day. Yeah, um... I do. I do understand people who are, you know, the establishments. If you say Labour and Tory as the establishment in in Westminster, I do understand people who are who think, look, what's the? We're, we're never going to beat them. It's been them forever, but it can't continue forever. It literally can't. It's impossible for it to, for the rest of time to just be Labour and Tory. And considering the changes we're going through now, yeah. It's not, nearly it's you know it's very very it has to end sometime why not now this why seems to be the best of times yeah, absolutely absolutely yeah. and 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 you know what black lives matter have done us a big favor in showing the truly ugly side and in showing the british public that the heritage is under threat genuinely it's not a load of far right crazies uh, you know trying to trying to stir up nonsense it's true and people can see that now they They've openly it. admitted. I, I played yeah. a video, uh, a Richard video yesterday, and and it's as Richard quite rightly said, it's always been on their website. But Black mm -hmm. Lives Matter are openly talking about being communist now and 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 wanting to bring down the, the entire system. And so so they're not even hiding that really they're just Antifa with a name that makes them untouchable. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. yeah. I, mean, but I, I think. I think we've got to examine the name. And again, you know, this this is controversial, but it's got to be said. I mean, I don't like the phrase white lives matter and I don't like the phrase black lives matter because it goes totally against what, you know, the, these people claim to be the 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 children of, of Martin Luther King Jr. They're not because Martin Luther King Jr. would have supported all lives matter or, or British lives matter or whatever, whatever it is. He would not support something that, that categorizes people by the color of their skin because that's what he was fighting against. He said it's the content of a man's character, not the color of his skin. But have you guys so, noticed all the worst organizations have all got the best sounding names? It's not an accident, that one. I don't know. They're, oh, very, no. they're very clever, 
They really are. I mean, look at look at them. Hope not hate. Unite against. Yeah, I was just thinking that racism, anti-fa, anti-fascist, yeah. and their Black yeah. Lives Matter. They make it yeah. impossible to disagree with them. Just, yeah. and they also have the added advantage where if I go, if I'm speaking somewhere and stand up to racism protest, the press gets to call me a racist without calling me a racist because if stand up to racism are protesting, then what am I? Yeah. They, that's another way they another way they yeah. use their, their very clever names they are very very clever indeed uh, but it won't be it's like the, it's like the hashtag oh, sorry richard carry on into, they have a direct feed into the mainstream media as well i mean mm. hope not hate anytime there's a bbc documentary on the so-called far right um hope not hate are are the, are the experts i mean these yeah. are these these self-appointed experts and, and one of the main spokesmen on far right politics is an ex bnp member I mean, he wouldn't have even been able to join UKIP, for goodness sake. And, and, and this, is, this is the sort of nonsense that we're up against. And now, he, you know, he, he goes and he, he, he does his little rants. He's now a far-left communist, and he was a far-right far BNP activist. He still has those pictures of the BNP on his bedroom wall, no doubt. So, I mean... <laughs> still, he, still, he still has his little pictures of Nick Griffin on the bedroom wall. <laughs> How am I supposed to follow that? <laughs> End the stream there, Tom, while you're in. I don't think you can. Yeah, just that's it, and that's it. That was the news for the day. <laughs> oh, dear. So, every you were there on the 30th. Um, on the 30th, when the. Is it the, in London? Yes. And, um, well, one, I mean, Rich has been looking for people on the ground, so could you give him a debriefing, please? No. Um, what 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 did you see and um what did you make of it from i know i know obviously you had to to, to go uh part way through but what what did you see what did you make of it and, and what are your thoughts about the whole thing um i saw it, it was very eerily quiet uh london i've never seen london that quiet it was 10 o'clock on a saturday morning and it was just dead when we got there never a good um, sign walking, <laughs> on, you know, walking on to parliament square what you can see is is black or grey steel boxes and it's not just Churchill that's covered there's a few and it just it looks all very I don't want to say 1980s but just it, it, it looks like a movie you know the sort of what 28 days later type of thing wow. where something awful has happened and now this is the aftermath now look at London instead of statues around Parliament Square you've got metal boxes or so something terrible has happened in London is essentially the scene then I saw veterans around Winston Churchill staff, statue, some of them very old men uh, with, with those sort of camping chairs and their medals on. And my heart just broke for them. I just can't, I'm just thinking, how must it feel to have fought for this country and to now have to watch while the police, the British police stand and see Winston Churchill. And, and, and it's not just a statue, it's not a piece of bronze, it's not a piece of stone. It represents what those men standing with their medals on. It represents them. It represents everyone who's fought for this country and died for this country. And my heart, I, I could feel, you know, I had a lump in my throat looking at these men. I thought, this is horrific. This is horrific. This is not Britain. And you know, you, I, I said, you, it looks like something terrible had happened. Something terrible had happened. It's, it's unimaginable to think that, th that that's where we are, that veterans, British veterans are being made to treat, to, made to feel so insignificant, so unimportant that they have to come and stand at Winston's, at Winston's statue, almost in a, almost mourning, almost mourning is, is the feeling that you got from it. And then of course you have the politicians calling them Nazis, racist, far right, an absolute, scandal and, absolute and are you aware are you aware of uh, and, and sorry if you are are you aware of the the i don't know if we can call them facts richard but the things that you, you, oh, that you I mean, found well i mean I, I i have a friend who's a veteran he, he he'd done um undercover work in um in northern ireland so he knows his stuff he's no morgan he's, he's not he's certainly not a, a walter mitty or a fantasist and he was doing a bit of um, a bit of work for me on on the on the day because obviously I couldn't be there, so he was doing a bit of camera work. And he phoned me and he said, "Look, he says uh, I've just seen um, two van loads of policemen dressed as as football hooligans, or not as football hooligans, as football lads or as football fans." And obviously, as it unpacked during the day, it transpired that a lot of the trouble was caused by people that nobody had ever seen before. 
Um, you know, I spoke to a lot of people that, that were involved in football, um, in the football community in London for many years. They didn't know who these people were that were running around causing all the havoc. And then lo and behold, when St. Patrick plucks a white man from the, from the jaws of death when he's being beaten allegedly by a black mob, um, it turns out that that St. Patrick is is very, very closely associated with the leadership of Black Lives Matter. And the gentleman who's plucked off the floor is an undercover police officer, or should we say an ex-undercover police officer, who spent the last 20 years infiltrating uh, the Millwall football, the, the Millwall football hooligan scene. Um, and, and, you know, of course, nobody, nobody in the in the mainstream media talks about that, which is a far better stro- story than St. Patrick putting this rather skinny, balding man on his shoulders and carrying him away from a baying mob. Um, so the whole thing was quite possibly a setup. There were certainly, you know, agent provocateurs in the, in, in the crowd there without a shadow of a doubt. And, you know, it was a trap. It was, and everybody said it was a trap. But it, it, even though it was a trap, it was still the right thing to do to go and stand at those statues and have a presence saying, we are not going to put up with this anymore. Um, you know, here we stand. We can do no other. We're not. We're not going to. We're not going to put up with this this nonsense. But there's no doubt that there was a lot of very, very, and I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I, a conspiracy theorists do my head in. But that is what was reported to me. Okay, it's only anecdotal, but I believe the sources that gave me that information. And the, and the thing about the poli- the undercover policeman was in the Daily Mail. So that's not something you know that that I plucked from some conspiratorial website. That guy was an undercover policeman. Um, allegedly left the police in 2014. But a- anybody that knows about the way the security services work and the way that, that special branch work, they will pay ex-police officers to do their bidding for them because there's deniability and they can get away with doing a lot more with people who are no longer officially employed by by the Met. So, you know, make of it what you will. Do you know, we, I think, Richard, we often find ourselves nowadays having to say, I don't believe in conspiracy theories, but... The disclaimer generation. What's going on, isn't there? That suggests yeah. it can't be this. In, they can't be this incompetent. It's all going rather too well for the state in this regard. That all went rather too well, um, and it wouldn't surprise me in the slightest if the police were planting. Of course they would. I mean, I saw a, a, a picture going around social media of a police woman pretending to be homeless. Uh, and someone going over, she was looking, she looked a little bit cleaner than most of them. But, you know, someone going over in order to test her, trying to hand her a fiver. And she was sort of, and I thought, you take the fiver. If you're going to try and pretend, at least take it. <laughs> you know, people know, you know, they get it. The only reason they went over is because they knew it was a police woman. So they definitely do do this. And I'm suspicious because it all works out so well. And yeah. then we have, like you say, Richard, then we have this massive big black guy and this beautiful photograph, which was just perfect in every way, and it's all over the front page of the BBC. And like you, I'm not, but I'm, I'm not conspiracy theorist, but this is just all a little bit too convenient sometimes. And of course, you've got the Stop Trump campaign funding uh, all of the stuff that they're doing in Britain mm. at the moment. Black Lives Matter, that is, um, is a little low. low if I say little, it's actually not that little, but it's a logo on the stuff that they're doing. But I don't know how. Again, this must be a bit of clever designing. You don't really look at it, do you, Richard, until someone points yeah. it out to you. But it's just quite clear, quite clear that it's there. So, you know, stop Trump and, and whatever else has got on the logo. What, what 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 amazes me is that you know apart from the, I mean that policewoman um, I'm just thinking about that that policewoman maybe she'd been defunded and that's why that's why she had to do it. <laughs> Black Lives Matter had got the way she'd been defunded and she had to go out and earn a few quid by begging. I mean, that's, that's what's maybe the, maybe the, maybe they're just that desperate for new recruits. Yeah, you never know. But, uh, but, you know, I mean, the laugh of it is these corporates that are backing Black Lives Matter. I mean, they are turkeys voting for Christmas. I mean, Yorkshire Tea got into that much of a panic because they were thinking, oh my goodness, they're going to find out the slavery on our tea farms out in India. What are we going to do? I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll throw loads of money at Black Lives Matter and we'll put out a statement <laughs> condemning everybody that says anything, you know, contrary. Yeah. It's absolute. The world is, I mean, we've, and again, it's a cliche, but the world has gone absolutely stark raving mad. <laughs> and um, But it's just good to sit and watch it burn, isn't it? <laughs> It's kind. It's kind of like I said. I said 
somebody gave me uh, like this test thing that's been going around the other day, and it shows you whether you're on the left, right, centre, liberal, all this other stuff. Uh, it's, and it's quite a well-constructed test, I have to say. And um, I can't, I promise not to reveal the results for the other people, so I won't. But I, I took this test, and like some other people, uh, you might be surprised that, I was surprised at the results because it stuck me in uh, 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 not a really far far position, but in a left liberal position. And I was like, ah, but then I said to someone, I said, if you apply the classic British liberal to that, it makes a bit more sense. But nevertheless, when it comes, not, not socialism and stuff like that, but when it comes down to uh, there being a party for the working class and things like that. Haven't the left and the right in terms of people that's treating that swapped over a little bit in the last, say, 20 years? Isn't there been a swap? It's not just gone mad. It's actually swapped over, hasn't it? They've, they've repolarized. Or am I going mad? No, I, no think you're, right. I think you're right. I mean, I people would say that I've gone from the left to the far right. I haven't actually changed at all. It's sort of swat. I've changed a little bit, as you normally but the do. the world's been a bit older. Uh, but otherwise, I really, it, it's everything else that changed. You know, it's sort of everything did it at 300, well, two, what was it, 180 degree turn. And I stayed still, but everything else changed around me. Um, and that's, no, I, I think you're absolutely right. And, and I don't, I don't know how, they're only valuable now, I suppose, in conversation left and right, because people don't really know no. what's what anymore. Yeah, I think that I think there's a there's an issue there, and it's a very serious issue um, of of this idea of divide and conquer, and 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 what the left are doing. They're playing identity politics, and of course, the left are now the establishment, and the establishment have have always played divide and conquer, um, and and yeah. this this race baiting that's gone on, and 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 the way that people have tried to create this black community that is that is that is totally against everything. It's false. It's a lie. I've got, and, and Tom and I have had them on live feeds. We, we've got lots of friends who are, who have a different colour skin to us. So what? I don't literally do not care what colour your skin is, and they've come on live feeds. They're appalled by what's happening with this this organisation called Black Lives Matter. They're appalled by the way the media has been, particularly programmes like. Can I mention Piers Morgan again? <laughs> <laughs> Piers Morgan. Morgan. The good news is that Piers Morgan is leaving Good Morning Britain. The bad news is, is he? he is. But Amory, I'm going to make a prediction. I believe Piers Morgan will be the leader of the Labour Party at the next general election. That's my prediction. I'm just going to throw it out there. Just wait and see what happens. But that's and by 2030, he's going to be God. Possibly. Well, I'm not. No, we'll not go down that road. But yeah, but. <laughs> I, I've seen, you know, just wait and see what Piers Morgan does. He's going to do. Piers so, Morgan. Yeah, is he a Labour man? Oh, of course, yeah. He used, to be, he used to be the editor of the Daily Mirror. Oh, he's the left. Of course, he's yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. But but the point is, you know, people like him have been involved in this dreadful race baiting for the past two or three weeks, and we've got to fight against this. Um, you know, we're we're trying to do a lot of stuff. We're going to try and the demonstration that we're going to have on the first of August. We're going to have it on a, a sort of theme of you know black and white um, unite um, on all the issues that we're that we're all passionate about. So I think we've really got to stretch on this one and 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 make sure that we that we basically do the opposite of what they're doing. They're trying to divide us, and what we want to do is unite irrespective of colour. You know, you should, we're not going to have quotas on who can, you know, who can come to the demonstration. But what we what we do get across is that absolutely everybody is welcome to come to, to demonstrations and welcome to join political parties, irrespective of race. And, and we're not going to have quotas of, of 20, you know, 20 black people or 20 white people or 20 yellow people, you know, leading a political party. It's nonsense. And, it, and it's so dangerous. And what will happen is it will feed into the extremes on both sides. And, and I think it's a... It's a, a disgusting thing that the that the establishment, the mainstream media, and, and these far left activists have done. It's I've never I've, I've never been so, I haven't been so angry about this since that since the bombings in 2017. Uh, you know, I'm just incensed by the whole thing. On the on the subject of bending knee, could I ask Amory, you as um, a political uh, leader, and uh, Richard, you as a as a community leader, how how you actually felt? when you've seen everybody from, and I need to split them apart actually in this, 
people from sportsmen uh, taking the knee. And very, for many of us, it's a, it's a, it's an act of submission. It's not an act of respect. Um, and when you see this, for me, is a completely different question. The police taking the knee the way they have. How, how do both of you? Did both of you feel? I know emotion shouldn't come into this, but it is part of it. How did that make you feel? Richard, uh, um, a, a variety of things and emotions are very important. I mean, we vote with our emotions. A lot of us don't like to admit that. We like to say yeah. that we sit down and study it. We don't actually, We're emo we vote with our emotions. Um, emotions ranging from fear, uh, especially with the police, because when the police are down on their knees to a group like that, you know they're not protecting us anymore. They Absolutely. are taking sides, visibly taking sides. I mean, Mike Speakman, our, our policing spokesman, will tell you that in his day as a Bobby, they, it was, they were proud of the fact it was a given that the police did never, never showed a morsel of what's of taking sides at a protest. It was it was a it was fundamental. Now they'll get up and dance with Extinction Rebellion or get down on their knees with communist Black Lives Matter. That's frightening. I don't believe, yeah. for example, that if I were in trouble, that the police would protect me in that instance. And I've no reason to believe it because look what they're doing. They're getting on their knees to a group which would happily kill me, I'm sure of it. So how can I feel confident in the police? I can't. You can't. And you can't. And Richard, you can't either because they're simply, they've chosen a side. That's frightening. That's a On the world stage. Down. On the world stage. Down. Absolutely. Um, but Churchill, to, to deface Churchill, I felt really emotional. I really, really did. I said to Ed, I, it was like look, watching someone hurting an animal. I had to look away. I can't look at that. Um, it's disgusting. And, and Ed, you know, described it as too much to bear. It is too much to bear because they have an audience while they're doing it. It is complete contempt. As I said, it wasn't, it's not brass or stone. It's a symbol of those who fought and died for this country. And it is spitting in the face of their families and dancing on their graves, frankly. And it, it made, I, I, it's, it's, I don't really have a word, but a strong, strong emotion. And also I have to say one thing that goes through my head throughout all this is, this is it. What we said was coming is here. Yeah. It felt yeah. a change. Okay, here we go. Almost the like voting had turned into oh, action. Yeah, yeah. We're, yeah, we're here. It's on. We're, we're, we have to fight now. This yeah. is it. That's how. Yeah, I, th I think from the point of view of, of, of taking the knee, um, I felt physically sick when I saw police officers mm -hmm. bowing down to obeying mob. Not just once, but it was. It, it happened on a very, very wide basis on that day in London. And look what happened. They ended up getting an absolute hammering by a by a baying mob of feral thugs who who if they'd have got the chance would have killed police officers. It's as simple, and they nearly did kill a police officer. That woman that was that was knocked off off a horse. Um, I felt I felt so sorry for the for the for the many good police officers. And I've got friends that were that were ex policemen. I've got friends that are still serving in the police, ex soldiers. There's very few ex soldiers allowed in the police anymore. They, they don't want ex soldiers in the police anymore because they don't want people that will not bow the knee. They want people that are pliable and will 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 do as they're told. Um, reference the sports stars, especially people like Lewis Hamilton and and Raheem Sterling yeah. and and the, these Anthony these Joshua multi multi yes Anthony Joshua multi multi millionaire privileged um spoilt brats let's just be honest that's what they were they they have never had it hard i don't care what they say they have never suffered right and the reality is especially people like lewis hamilton who i'm who i'm told doesn't even pay a penny of income tax in the united kingdom i don't know if that's true or not but i've heard he's a, he's a tax exile in, in in monaco but when i saw them taking the knee in those football stadiums i was waiting for a jesse owens to stand up and say in, in exactly the same way that Jesse Owens did in, the, in I think it was the 1936 Olympics when he when he won that race and literally stuck the middle finger up to Adolf Hitler. I was waiting for a Jesse Owens to stand up, but there wasn't one. And what I realised then was because I could never understand how an intelligent, industrious people like the Germans could be taken over by an extremist like Adolf Hitler or how the Russians could be ruled by communists for 70 years and, and, and see millions of people slaughtered in the gulags. I could never understand how rational people and rational industrial countries could end up in that situation. When I saw those supposed sports stars and people like Gary Lineker and all those, yeah. that, that privileged class 
sneering at at, at working class people, I realised that that can that Adolf Hitler can happen in any country, that Joseph Stalin can happen in any country, and we we better realise. And I'm not talking about a physical fight. We are in the fight of our lives, and thankfully, because of social media, and because of because of the internet, we have a bit of a chance. But even the social media platforms are capitulating to this absolute nonsense. This is a new new type of Cold War, isn't it? Almost, almost. Well, I mean, it's it's like we said at the beginning: we're the resistance. We've, we've yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, see, people are, people have, have have given me a bit of a hard time because I've said we're on the losing side. But when I've said we're on the losing side, what I meant was what that phrase you just said again you said it earlier on that the with yeah that the the you know yeah they they've got all the they've got all the keys got all the locks but but it doesn't mean that a resistance can't win i've never said we can't win i just feel like you know we've been on the losing side i understand what you mean we are on the you know when people say to me but you're just you're like well, for example when i cancelled the muhammad cartoons going back a few years now um, everyone said to me, but you're letting them win. And my answer, which surprised people, was, but they win all the time. Yeah. <laughs> we do. Yeah. We have to accept it. If we're going to get angry and, and filled with anguish and despair every time they win, um, <laughs> yeah. all, you know, we have to accept yeah. we're on the, on, the, on the back foot, and that's putting it mildly. Um, Even being on here today. Moral, a moral, we are, we have the, we're standing on the moral high ground, and that is for sure. And um, it's, so, it's and that's why we mustn't engage in the, in in the violent side of things because we will lose that oh, that it's, moral it's, high ground overnight. The, the violence is never going to work. I mean, it's it's it, it's just not going to work. I mean, you know, look at the, and this is what when I got involved. And I said it last night when I got involved in the movement. What I was saying to people: don't make the mistakes that we made in Northern Ireland. Do not go down that road because all you do is fill a whole lot of graveyards and a whole lot of prison cells, and it doesn't work. It, it you know the IRA found out the IRA lost. I mean, it, and then Blair capitulated to them. The, 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 the violence does not work. But the, and in such a trope, sorry, sorry, please continue. Well, yeah, the, the, what we've got to realise is at the moment, we still have the semblance of democracy. Now, I believe democracy itself is under real threat. And we've seen this in a lot of statements of the great and the good saying, well, look, look at what they did when they had a choice. They chose Brexit. We must. They're almost saying stop people voting or stop their votes. And we came very close to losing our democracy. Um, oh, oh. With the Brexit, with the Brexit thing, and I believe that they will they will continue to try and frustrate democracy, and that's why we've got to play a very very clever game. When we do, you don't think they they missed their chance then because they because we basically had a rogue par parliament, didn't didn't we? Absolutely. And oh, and for the first was that is it fair to say for the first time in a thousand years it was it was the most it was the it was the one rogue parliament that well, that, that, say, that threatened to destroy it all. Since the Civil War, since, since the English Civil War. Yeah, yeah, was, yeah, fair enough, we, fair enough. It was, it was more, you know, the, the, the Civil War was Parliament against the King in... in, in yeah, what, yeah. What we, what we had with the part, with the, with those, those traitors, and they are traitors, let's just call them as they are. Those traitors in Parliament were against the people, so that was Parliament against yeah. the people, as opposed yeah. to the King against the people, or the King against so Parliament. What you have 600, is it 650 people, I always forget, in Parliament? 650 yeah six yeah, yeah, yeah. six hundred fifty versus uh, the rest of the country so to speak and this is why you can't do this amory when you're in there <laughs> what, what can i do well I, listen i'll go in and run a muck don't worry about that it will That's, create habit. That. it will create habit i habit. mean Oh, I mean, oh, can you imagine how I, mean, I just oh what, what would be the first thing that you would do seriously oh god because because i know it's it, at the moment it's so much work away but but that just think of that the satisfaction of being able to say the first thing i really want to do is i would introduce the for a bill as soon as i possibly could um <laughs> if it was today it would it would probably be an immigration bill or a civil liberties bill or something to get them to answer i want an answer on, for example, uh, freedom of speech, libraries. Can we get a commitment out of you that we won't be removing books? Can we get a commitment out of you? So, you know, you've. it, it really depends on what's happening, but I would get a bill in as, as soon as possible to, because I'm on my own, you've got to expose them. And that's what one person can do on their own. So if I was on a council on my own, one thing I can do is keep embarrassing them. 
so that's really putting a, a test question before them, a test bill before them immediately to get an answer out of them on a fundamental right. question. Exposing them is one thing, is something that a sole MP can do. Um, but for the moment, there are so many issues. Immigration is top of my list at the moment. It really is. Because unless we stop that, we can't hope to do what we need to do. And I'm sorry, you know, a lot of people disagree with me on this, but the Hong Kong issue, how can we possibly, I don't know where you guys are ever on this, but to me, it's bewildering that we are, that Boris has offered potentially 3 million Hong Kongers the chance to come and live here. I don't really understand. What are your views on, what are your views on that? Lots of people are disagreeing with me. I cannot, we need to be removing 2 million people, not bringing them in. Well, well I mean, I mean, I, this is this is why I'm involved in politics. But what I would do is 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 remove um, however many extremists that we can round up from all the different sides of the of, of the um, of the divide, let's say, and let them go to their little utopias, whether it's um, <laughs> Afghanistan or Pakistan or or um, I don't know where the where the left want to go. Maybe it's to North Korea and and replace the three million extremists that are trying to destroy our country with three million industrial industrious Chinese. Now, obviously, that's fantasy. That's not going to happen. Um, I, I can understand. I mean, I think Hong Kong's a very interesting one because Chris Patton was was the architect of the of the absolute disaster in Hong Kong. Chris Patton not only betrayed Hong Kong, he also did the same in Northern Ireland with the RUC. But Chris Patton is the architect of what's happening in Hong Kong. So it's all right. The British, the, to the Tory government saying, oh, well, this is the Chinese behaving dreadfully. The Chinese are just fast forwarding what they were going to do anyway, because Patton allowed them to do it. We should have been far tougher when we dealt with China in the late 90s. But Chris Patton went, no, no, it's OK. Well, we can trust the Chinese. No, you can't trust the Chinese. The Chinese Communist Party is extremely dangerous and and has a huge amount of influence in, in, is there in, in the British establishment. Yeah. Is there any chance that that um, the what 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 the government has said about taking these two because two million two million when we, we're talking about other figures that we can't handle is unbelievable so is there any chance this is a political bluff what you mean from but between boris and china yeah that's what and he's I, calling it well, that, that's what he's calling it. You know, this is how we have to stand up to China. Well, this is not standing up to China. Uh, you want to stand up to China, sue them for the billions of pounds they owe us for coronavirus. Stop the business. Absolutely. Remove, you know, bring our manufacturing elsewhere. That's how you deal with China. Um, this might be his way of rebelling against them. But what do we, what, how does it harm China? We're the ones who are going to be harmed by it. This Absolutely. makes sense to me. And again, it's not about Hong Kong people. But we, as you say, Richard, if we could throw out three million and replace them with that, I would rather actually just throw out three million and start getting British people back into work and start getting this country back on its feet through its own people. People yes. say to me, yeah. Hong Kongers are very industrial. They'll help rebuild the economy after coronavirus. I don't want Hong Kongers rebuilding the economy. I want the British rebuilding the economy. They need to be given the confidence to get out. And that idea that we have to import people from the other side and of the that, world to build the economy, it's just an insult to the British again, isn't it? it, it is. And that confidence it's gets carried down as well through, through lines of generations, doesn't it? We've lost a bit of confidence as the empire's yeah. gone and all these other things. We've, we've lost the confidence. A lot of people have lost their sense of self, their sense of yeah. identity, sense Absolutely. of religion, all these kinds of things. Absolutely. So, so by, by doing it ourselves, Yes. We, aren't we setting a precedent for, for generations to come over possible confidence and, and vision? I think it's really, really important that it's the British who rebuild this country now because it's going to need rebuilding. I think it's absolutely vital for that self-confidence. And people underestimate the importance of self-confidence. In individuals, it's really, really important. People don't succeed in life if they have no self-confidence. You know, it's not, it's really crucial. And it's the same for a country. It is the same for any sort of defined group. They need self-confidence. They need belief in order to succeed. And this the British government has been running down British people year on year on year for decades now. I think let's put British people to work to getting the economy back. 
getting it back on its feet, something to be proud of a new direction undertaken by the British people. That's what people need. They need a bit of praise, a bit of support. Instead of telling Brits all the time, you're awful, we need to import this bit. No, you don't. Stop, stop insulting everyone. Give How have we got into a situation where we pay, we pay people to go out to work, to lie to us, who completely hate us, and then we go and vote for them? <laughs> yeah, yes. Yeah. But there you go. That's that's, that's, the and that's, what, that's why there needs to be that's why there needs to be genuine root and branch change. And the other thing with the with the three million people that Boris is planning on in, in, importing into the country, I mean, I, I'll be honest with you. I, I actually thought, well, if if it means that you offset the the Islamic bloc vote and and you stop uh, the Labour Party ever getting into power, then maybe is it's a worthwhile exercise. But of course, what it's going to do, it's going to if he if he imports uh, three million Chinese people, they're going to they're going to become a Tory voting bloc, and and I think that's probably his his intention of that. I think there's probably something. I just wouldn't want to but... see us take a wave of three million people in, um, no matter well, how I mean, it was done. See, you know, unless Just they go and live in unless they go and live in the middle of Wales somewhere in the Brecon Beacon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, there won't be Wales anymore. <laughs> It'd be you know, a colony. I'm sorry, it's, it's not Wales if it's got three million Chinese in it. I want to hear your response to that, Richard, because that's a compelling argument. <laughs> <It'd> be Wales. <laughs> <laughs> Occupied, <laughs> Occupied Wales. Well, they could be quite. It'd be very different Wales. Well, We'd have Welsh well, refugees coming exactly, off the border. Exactly, exactly. Look, where are they? Where are they going to live? Where are they going to work? Yeah, you know, it's this, I mean, it's 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 um, you know, it's it's madness. And I, I don't mean, know what Boris is doing. Have here. I have sympathy for the Chinese because of what Chris Patton did to them. But I mean, sorry, the Hong Kong Chinese because yeah. of what Patton did to them. I think it's dreadful what the what the Chinese communists are doing. And Absolutely. I think I think a, a, again, a bigger question needs to be, you know, let's look at the connections that David Cameron has with China. Let's look at the connections George Osborne has with China. Let's look at the connections that that Cameron and Blair, uh, sorry, not Cameron, um, Gordon Brown and Blair have with China, and they're all connected. And and. You know, it would be very interesting to see how much money these individuals have actually got from businesses in China, particularly George Osborne, who who we know got a very lucrative contract with a with a with a hedge fund in London that paid him, I think, about six hundred and fifty thousand pounds a year for doing one day's work a week. Um, so it'd be very interesting to see what what got in that what commanded him that salary what what's the influence that he's got with China to be able to get him that salary from a hedge fund. Mm. Mm. That's a, a really, really good question, Richard. I'd like to know that too. I'd like to know what links they all have with China and including current front bench yeah. ministers. Absolutely. What's the absolutely. absolutely. We, we ought to look into that somehow, wouldn't, wouldn't yeah. we? I wish we could. I, I wish we could, especially if, if, if there's, there's any chance that, say, uh, something was promised whilst in power, you know, that then was repaid once power was gone, you know? things like that i think you know i think that'd be quite easy things to get away with i think i think what you know what, what we've got to realize that we do have a traitor establishment you know that that's made up of ex ex political leaders um senior civil servants media um th there really is a traitor elite and and they do not it's like you're saying Marie, about self-confidence um britain lost its self-confidence or, or not britain the british people didn't lose their self-confidence our so-called leaders who haven't been leading, they've just been running around in circles from 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 as entering the EU onwards or even before we entered the EU, there was no self-confidence in Britain. So so this has been a very long process. And to put it in reverse is going to take a lot of work. We were talking about this last night, how we can do it, you know, get involved in education, get involved in all sorts of things. But let's like say we are the resistance and we've got to we've got to we've got to, you know, strain every single sinew, which which is why I like what you're doing, Anne-Marie, because you are just you know, you, you're not taking you're not taking the easy the easy the easy road here. It's a difficult road that you're traveling, and it's a difficult road we're all traveling. But we've got to we've got to we've got to keep pushing this. We've got to keep highlighting yeah, yeah. issues. But it's a, you know what, Richard, it is a difficult road, but it's a fantastic road. I'm very proud of us. 
Yes. I'm proud of us. I'm proud of us for being the dissidents and for being the rebels and for being the ones to stand up and say the truth. It's really very, we're, we're very, you know, to be fair to us, we're brave and I'm proud. I'm proud of yeah. everyone on our side of the movement. I really, really am. Because yeah. it takes yeah. guts to do this. And the three of us are in public showing our faces, saying what we're not allowed to say. And a lot of people, you know, it courage is contagious and everyone who stands up should be yeah. very proud of the fact that we stand up and more and more people are standing up but you We've know share the risk fixing the self-confidence is, is schools it's got to be starting point to schools you might have seen this horrific child abuse carried out by channel four where they did some experiment in a school in london and the white kids were crying the white yeah. kids were in tears because they felt guilty they were made to feel guilty but also because they were terrified of saying the wrong thing because they were wise enough to know that as white kids, if they say wow. the wrong thing, it will follow them for the rest of their lives. And wow. we have young, young teenagers, white teenagers, upset and afraid of saying the wrong thing because they know that it will ruin their career chances, it will ruin their life chances. That's what we're doing to British kids in British schools. And we wonder why the country has lost its ability and its willingness to fight for itself. It hates itself. This is abuse. It does. You do not tell a child you are bad because of your skin color. That's abuse. It's abuse. It's so, so if I thought it this, it's if I thought this generation was 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 masochistic, as in the generation, the younger generation being masochistic and and the left being masochistic, what on earth are these children going to be? I know. I yeah. Uh, it's frightening. It's what well, gets I mean, people to get down on their knees. And and what we saw the spectacle in America of washing feet and and kissing feet and and all this kind of thing and 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 it, there was a school in New York where the white kids were made to put chains around their necks and walk around the school wow. in chains. This is what we're doing. I notice, I notice even the word black is being removed from things, and I'd love to see how that's going to work out in Spain, where where um, uh, the word for black is negro. Um, so that's going to be an interesting thing to completely remove the, the colour black from the entire language. Um, what, are we, what are we replacing it with? Is there a colour? Well, that's, that's what I want to know. Okay. That's what I want to know. But, Probably haven't thought it through. It yeah, I've got this feeling that these are one movers. Yeah. But, so, <laughs> you know, we're, to, we're, we're touching on, on the slavery <laughs> issue there. And, and, and the reality is that slavery continues in Africa. You know, not just in Libya. People talk about Libya. Mauritania. Is, is the it's, 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 it's resurgence, isn't it, in Africa? And, 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 but the thing about it is, what people, a lot of people don't understand, that the, the genuine black Africans, West Africans and East Africans are being enslaved by people who are, I mean, if we're going to go down the road of ethnicity, which I hate doing, but the reality is the people who are enslaving black Africans are ethnically more, more Arabian and European than they are black African. So if, if Black Lives Matter want to go and get themselves into a, into a, into a fight with with non-black people who are enslaving um, black people now, why don't they go to Mauritania? Why don't they go to Libya and fight against ISIS in in in, in North Africa? Why don't they go to Cameroon and 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 northern Nigeria and fight against the Islamic extremists that are enslaving and murdering black African Christians in those areas? They won't do it because they haven't got the bottle to do it, and and it doesn't fit their narrative. So it's very easy to to pick on long dead. Um, west country bristolians or whatever you call them yeah. um as opposed to actually going and standing up against the people who are doing it now and of course the slave trade originated with the north african muslims as they moved through east and west africa that's where it came from in the middle ages and, and, and onwards and again people people just won't talk about it they won't they won't talk because they don't like the truth they want their little fantasy and, and they ignore the fact that, that, that it was it was William Wilberforce, uh, you know, a, a white English evangelical who pushed for the abolition of the slave trade. Then it was the white British Royal Navy that went round and sank the slave, the, the slave ships from other European countries and freed people from the slave markets of, of North, East and West Africa. But of course, it doesn't fit the narrative. And, and, and people are also taught that that's justification when that's not what it is at all. It's, it's information. Exactly. 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 You know. Yeah. But, you know, that, that's why education is important. We said last night, Anne-Marie, when we're on the feed, wouldn't it be great if we could get some some great cartoonist and some great writer 
to put a little children's book together or, or set a series of small children's books, cartoon books about British history and about why Britain's great and get them delivered to every single home in the United Kingdom. I mean, it costs a fortune, but get those little books out there and let let the children know in a very simple way why they can be proud to be British, no matter what colour they are. They can be proud to be British because because Britain was and still is the greatest country on the planet as far as I'm concerned. Me too. I've just written that down, Richard. Yeah. I think that's a fantastic idea. Yeah. I wonder if, I mean, if, if, if you had the little four Britain on the logo on the back of it, then when they when they come eighteen, you've got a, you've got a little army of voters that can. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I'm serious about that. I think that. No, I, I think, think it's a great system. idea. I think it's a great idea. We just yeah. need people. With, we, I've got the ideas. We just need people that can execute it. That's the that's the issue. Yeah. 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 Um, we have a cartoonist. Yeah. Oh, let me find one. I don't we're, not David, we're not get David Williams to write it. Oh, uh, you know how how. Uh, I'm so disappointed. I loved Little Britain. I and I also yeah. loved the other one that came. I actually preferred it. Come fly with me, the one in the in filmed yeah. in the Stansted Airport. I yeah. know that airport anyway. Anyway, yeah. um, and that was it. Was hilarious. And because of this one character who was probably one of the funniest on it, Precious Little, the little yeah. black woman who worked in the cafe and did sod all. And, you know, this is funny. This is funny. Yeah. And then they apologise. It's so disappointing. It's so pathetic. disappointing. It's pathetic. It's pathetic. It's pathetic. Yeah. It is and, pathetic. And, and, you know, you know, trying to axe faulty towers and, and all this stuff that was just, you know, they're taking away fun. I mean, they are like, I mean, people always talk about Puritans being killjoys and all the rest of it. They're like modern day Puritans. They want to spoil everybody's fun. You can't have a sense um, of And why are we suddenly too stupid to differentiate between judging something by today's standards, judging something by the standards of 10 years ago, and so on and so on and so on and so on. I mean, is that something to do with the fact that they don't teach history anymore? They just teach us to hate history. Could that be why that is? Because because we we never had this issue before. We just judge things by the standards of their time. Um, hence why there are statues of people that didn't live perfect lives. Um, and some of them lived they're terrible lives in some ways, but they, but they weren't. Those statues weren't erected in memoriam of the things that they did wrong. Um, it's all got so, you know. Well said, well, actually. Um, you're right. Nobody, if they're going to, if we're only going to make statues for perfect people, there'll be no statues. Exactly. Everyone has a dark side, and everyone Absolutely. has something. You're right. You're, you've put it beautifully. They, the statues are not what about they did wrong. They're about what they did right, what they achieved yeah. for the country. It's not about their yeah. personal personality issues or whatever it might be. It's what they did for the country. That's and if something got something wrong, that's a great reminder as well. All, all in history, all, all encased in that history, isn't it? It's there. It's, it's... And, you know, you you said you asked about why they're going back, and because they can't find what they're looking for today. Actually, race relations were getting better. I mean, the, the Islam thing is different, but between yeah. black and white, they were getting better and better. As far as I, I can agree. see, better than the 70s and 80s. Um, so when they can't find the racism, they've got to find, you know, they've got to go back and find it in the past. If they can't find it today, they yeah. find it in the past. Yeah. It's and a bit they, like... Um, they they want to call it objection to Islam racism because they can't find real racism. So they're making yeah. it up. And now they're going back to find it from the past it, they've got to find it because they have no legitimacy otherwise they can't stand up and say actually we've yeah. done really well race yeah. wise where they're yeah. going to get their money from their their legitimacy from they have to create racism in order to i think you you've hit the nail on the head there um it it, it really does you know i was saying to someone the other day this is a, a generation of people that could be going well do you know what we won we yeah. can, I mean, there's always problems in life, but we can kick back and enjoy the fruits of a thousand mm. years worth of struggles. And and I know it's not built in us to necessarily, that's a bit, that's a bit utopian, but you get the point. Mm. And, uh, but we can't do it, can we? Or, or certain people can't, can't let us do it. Just can't. And, and that's one thing, but to aim it at the, the young and they're so young they can't even decide you know decide for themselves so that that on and, and i know i'm i'm 
j- jumping, but it's 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 all melted in the same snowball with the then what I consider to be child abuse by allowing someone under sixteen to transition uh with the transgender community i mean i mean and then to have parents um have a child come down as all kids do and say oh i want to be a girl today and the parents jump on that and say right my kid was born in the wrong body they send them to school in the different clothes the next day and that's how it is uh milo not everyone's favorite cup of tea but i remember him bringing something up and he said that for certain classes of families it was actually easier and i didn't think about it this and there's i'm not saying what he said was true there's proof but he said he said in 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 especially with sort of uh, not upper class families but people with a bit more money he said it's easier to say your child was born into the wrong body than to say they were gay for instance so because that would then in in old in old-fashioned people's minds reflect on the parents rather than just the child being as the child is. So he was kind of saying it's almost a dodge. Um, and I'm sorry, I've gone and talked a bit too long, but but you get where I'm going there. Well, that's happened in Iran. I mean, you know, the the, um, the Iranians are, are, are basically um, transitioning people who are quite obviously gay because they will not in any way countenance homosexuality of any sort in Iran. So, so rather than admit that they've got homosexuality in Iran, they'll actually um, mutilate gay people and 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 tell everybody that all oh, these people just that they were just born in the wrong body they want to be a man or a woman or whatever it is and that's happened you know that's that's again that's documented that's that's happening now so it's not even it's not even a liberal thing to do this this is a this is an extremist islamic government that's actually doing this to cover up because they and don't it's want something to get people in their in their in their country something i wanted to tell you guys was that um oh it's going to go now um, I wanted to tell you that. No, it's always the important ones I forget. <laughs> it's always the ones where I go, I really want to hear what Amory and Richard got to say on that one. Come back on Churchill, sure. um, uh, Tom, because uh, you know I was I was thinking there when when Amory was talking about Churchill and, and those 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 soldiers weeping, not weeping because obviously they're not gonna, they're not going to weep, but the, the soldiers obviously mourning for the for the for the mm-hmm. terrible desecration of the statue of Sergio and more importantly that the 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 cenotaph that was dreadfully desecrated. Um but the reality is people forget that it was it was only ten years ago that, that Churchill was voted by the British public the greatest um Britain that ever lived. I mean, that was it was it was a massive. It was a TV series that went on for weeks, and everybody got to vote. and And the British, in a massive majority, voted that Churchill was that was the greatest, um, you know, British British man that ever lived or British person that ever lived. And and now I have him slandered and 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 denigrated. And Antifa and and BLM, who who are who are the seed of Antifa, to desecrate his statue when he stood against real fascism alone for years and and defeated fascism almost single-handedly to do that is is in it, it just defies defies all logic and there was a there was a girl standing at the statue and there was a there was a lone cameraman filming her and she was ranting at him and she said if it wasn't for churchill she was she's a black girl she said if it wasn't for churchill i'd still be in africa and she was only a young girl so she'd obviously been born and brought up in britain she was very well dressed quite articulate and i thought well, I've been to Africa and I've been to some of the worst slums in Africa and some of the poorest countries in Africa. And I don't think you really want to swap with the people that I've seen dying because they're in abject poverty and because they're in failed states. You really want to go to Africa? Do you really want to go and swap your lovely, luxurious, privileged existence in the United Kingdom for a complete slum and a dirt floor house in Africa? I don't think so. And maybe been sold into prostitution or abused or whatever happens. I mean, you know, some of some of the the the, the um, circumstances that people living in Africa are absolutely horrendous, and and that's the sort of insanity that, that that's been pumped into these kids. And I'm not necessarily blaming the kids, of course. You know, once you get to a certain age, you should have your, your own mind to think yourself. But if you've been constantly brainwashed that you're oppressed and that you're living in somewhere that institutionally hate you and and the white people that pretend to be your friends well really they're not really your friends they really don't like you because of the color of skin and that's what's happened that's yeah, what's happened yeah. to a generation of our children and mm-hmm. it's not just child abuse on the, on the white children that have been taught that sort of nonsense mm-hmm. it's child abuse on the black and asian children who've been taught that that sort of nonsense as well and it's got to stop 
and, yeah. and and that's why it's like you know we're saying last night to Tom, I'd rather just go swimming every day and just chill out and enjoy the rest of my life. But I'm constrained. I've got. To, I cannot stop doing this because the whole future for my children, my grandchildren, our future is at stake of this great this great United Kingdom, and we've got to we've got to. And, and, and the thing is, I keep saying it. I think we'll win. Oh, we'll oh. win in our lifetime. But oh, I yeah. think we will win. We will win. Gotcha. We're going to, because it, this insanity can't go on. Yeah. When you, you you mentioned, sorry, just I wanted to take a, a back step just to to, to Winston Churchill. Um, I watched something I don't know how long it was a few years ago now, and and Peter Hitchens on, and he was on a panel. Uh, looked like the panel was sort of set biased against him, so they get the reactions out of him that they wanted. Um, but nevertheless, um. Peter Hitchens was Peter Hitchens, uh, one of the last, whatever, you know, I have disagreements with him, but one of the, one of the last true conservatives. Um, and he, there was uh, a, a, some LGBT people there, and I, and I differentiate them from gay people, lesbian people and stuff like that, because I consider it a leftist organisation. So they had, they had people like that there. Uh, and they had people, you know, sit on the fence and, and the, the, the usual, the usual suspects. Um, and what he, when he was asked a question, when, what he espoused was his belief in God, um, his belief in the, the institution of marriage, um, his belief in uh, separation of church and state. I don't need to tell you the values of conservatism. The point being was that when he said what he said, there was a good crowd in this building. He got booed like you wouldn't believe. And I remember when I heard him booed, thinking, if he'd said exactly the same thing, even 10 years before, he might have got a standing ovation for what he just said. How the hell can it change so quickly? How's that possible? It, it, it has happened very quickly. I mean, if you look at the trans thing as one issue, overnight that happened. Overnight we have the media accepting and the government accepting things like non-binary. I have no ah. idea what that's supposed to be all about. It's not too ridiculous. And yet the government is promoting this stuff. And that happened just like that. They're very good. What and there's I no say? scientific studies on it. None. Very good. None. There, there's no, there's no, this born in the wrong body thing is literally off the top. Someone made that yeah. up. Yeah. Literally, someone just made that up. And now doctors are being forced to agree with it. If a doctor says, hold on, this is absolutely ridiculous. There's no such thing as born in a wrong body. They won't work. They won't because work. Because it's now come down to how I feel um, supersedes the truth. Yeah. Yeah, we're in trouble. Been... We're in trouble. Just... We are in trouble. Well, well, I I discovered a new word today. Um, All right. I was just doing a bit of reading, <laughs> and the new the new word the word for today. Don't worry, it's not going to get you. It's not going to get you banned from YouTube. Well, it, I hope it won't. <laughs> but the the word. Let me just get this right. Sorry, I've just got to I've got to get this back into my mind. Oh yes, um, the hetero patriarchy. You heard that one? I the think I have. I... Isn't that a great one? I've never heard that before. So that's my word for the day. Oh, so they've doubled it now. If you're watching the channel, go and research the hetero. If you want to know. Oh, my God. Video, go and research the hetero patriarchy. I mean, the, it doesn't take you to, to be too smart to work out what it means. but it basically. So means they've that, upgraded the patriarchy well, now. Well, it wow. Was actually, it was actually the white supremacist hetero. The white supremacist capitalist hetero patriarchy. That was the that was the phrase. So, uh, so someone sits yeah. down coming out with this, but uh, thinking up, this. Uh, honestly, they do. They. I. I want to know who came up with pansexual and pangender and and z and I don't who 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 sat down and wrote this list. I just first time I ever saw him was Facebook, but but okay. the the way that I don't think there's any um parameters to it because there was 60 odd at one point there was 50 odd at one point it just seems that that john identifies with being a three-year-old elephant he gets to to, to be that so yeah. it seems that this list is, it's got i can't even find I've, I've looked i can't even find one name or one person that will put your their name to having written it i can't <laughs> even find an author <laughs> yeah 
Well, it's more and like- some, you know what? Some of this stuff is sneaking into the dictionary. Yeah. This is we're legitimizing these words, cisgender. I was years before what I knew what that, cisgender meant. What does it mean? Can someone explain that? What, what's cisgender? What's I that? tell you, because I, I only do, I, well, I've not, I've not long understood it myself, so I'll try my best. I hope yeah. this is right. Cis means that you are, the you, you feel like the gender you were born as. So all three of us presumably are cisgender. Right, okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So because there was no word for someone who just feels like the sex they are, I don't know what it feels like to be, you know, you still see these people said, I feel like I'm a woman. I think, what do you, tell me what, what's that? Feel? I don't wake up in the morning and think, yeah. I really feel like a woman today. You just, yeah. what do you <laughs> feel like? What do you feel like? I just feel like me. What do you feel like? And how the hell would yeah. you know? You know, yeah. crazy, crazy, but it's, it's being legitimized. So that's what yeah. cis means, Richard. Okay. So You'll never be the person. same again now that you know so that. I, so I can quite happily say I'm a cis now. I'm You're a cisgender, yeah. Does that mean I'm part of the sisterhood then, or is that something different? I don't know. It's, oh, God, I don't know. I think it gets complicated, doesn't it? <laughs> so so within the, the, at the, end of, at the end of films like Star Wars um, and in, in, and in uh, certain Star Trek, they've it's managed to squeeze, squeeze in words like, oh, they like buried it, yeah. Uh, squeeze in words like pansgender. Uh, which is somebody who's just greedy, I think, because they, they'll, they'll, well, I'm not going to say it on here, but they, they are not, according to the, the description of them, anything's a target, um, is is how I kind of took it. Um, so I'll just say that. I don't even know how to say that politely. I'm so sorry. Um, <laughs> I just I just don't know how to describe it. I think you've said it fairly politely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, yeah and, and so, some of the, some of the well, names. Well, what the Z means in the LBT. Oh well, when I read through when I read through the names and the, see, this is the thing though. They're they're, they're about to hit civil war because uh, maybe maybe I'm re- actually be able to because I'm only a little bit into this, but there's a bit of a civil war be going going on between the uh, LGB oh. and the T, isn't there? Oh yeah. Oh absolutely. Could you explain a bit about that, Anne Marie? Because mm-hmm. I'm I'm only on the edges. Um, I do, probably a little bit on the edges myself, but it's been going on for a long time um, where people are pro tea and anti tea. And if you look on Twitter, you'll find hashtags drop the tea. Um, and there's a lot of Is this to do with intersectionalism. No, it's just because it's got nothing to do with it. I mean, if you sort of take homosexuality at its purest form, it means same sex attraction. That's what it means. It means a person attracted to their own sex. So you're not attracted to men or women, but your own sex. And that's what. So, but that people who if you have a, if you if gender is fluid for example you can't have same sex attraction mm, because there's no sex yeah. it's very so contradictory then. they got nothing to do with each other they're opposed to each other yeah. and it's kind of like because of the success of lgb in getting mainstream acceptance and all the rest everyone else started thinking well look what the gays did let's latch on to that and that's exactly what's happening because now you've got A, B, C, D, E, F, G, D, and no one quite knows. I mean, I think there are even numbers and symbols in there now. No one quite knows. So, I, yeah, the, but there is definitely a civil war. And I think it's, it's you know, you can see Douglas Murray talks about it as well and uh, and different people who are saying, what, what, hold, hold on a minute, hold on a minute. When did when did you put me in that car? I don't, it's a, there's, there's, yeah, to, in answer to the question, definitely there is a civil war and it's been going on since the start. Well, so, no, go on. Sorry, no, no, sorry. No. It's, it's it's Richard. Richard, did you want to get in then? Yeah, I mean, this is just identity politics. This is all it is. It's yeah. just dividing people yeah. and, and say and and pitting people against each other. And the only the only reason I can see that you want to divide people is so that you can control them. Yes, it's absolutely. as simple as that. Because it doesn't. I don't care what people do in the privacy of the, of of their own bedrooms or living rooms, or whatever they do. I don't care. It's none of my business, and I don't care about it. I don't care what color people are. I don't really care what religion they are, as long as that religion isn't a religion that wants to enslave us all, uh, rape mm-hmm. our daughters, and 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 kill anybody that that, that says anything about their prophet. I, I wonder which religion I'm talking about there. But the the, the reality. Hinduism. It, 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 yeah, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what people do or what they believe, as long as they, as long as they're proud of this country and they want to support this country and see this country succeed. That's what I care about, and the rest of it is 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 so ludicrous. But it is purely about the left want to control people, and this is the mechanism they've realised. Absolutely, you see it's what I mean by classic British liberal. Huh? 
You see what I mean by cl- classic British liberal? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, carry on. <laughs> but it's true, we are. We are yeah. classical. But yeah, you're absolutely right, Richard. It's a communist thing, isn't it? To, um, uh, to categorise. This is excessive categorization. It takes away the humanity, the individual of the person. So whatever it's taste, they're almost quantifying and categorizing people by sexual taste. Now, if you like sex a certain way, you're in this category. You would say, now have a label. Well, but why? Why are you? It's excessive categorization, labeling of oh, people yeah, in different yeah. groups. It's a communist thing to do. It's it, that's I what was, they I was, do. I was, I was the humanity. I was talking to Richard about this yesterday, and is a, you've covered part of it there because saying it's a communist thing to do. Mm. But, um, oh, you know, just say as me. Um, why am I being asked to walk into a room and perceive someone that I instantly perceive as a man? Why am I being asked to, um, in some case, forced to? ignore the the primal responses of my body and my mind and to lie about what i see in order to um save someone's feelings from their delusion being shattered especially when and i wasn't going to mention this and i'm going to mention this part of it especially when the suicide rates in transgender communities are at 40 percent when you compare that to the massively high uh, rates of, of men in Britain, which is 4%, it's, it's you know, obviously 10 times more. And um, after transitioning, it, the, the, the suicide rate does not drop. Um, also, there is a clinic been set up by people who have been put through, you know, you know, uh, people complain, complain about the NHS. They go in, they get a few uh, assessments and then they get transitioned um and um people thought that can't be an easy process and there's a there's a, a charity been set up now uh for, i forget its name uh, but it's definitely uh, definitely for uh, for real um and it's people who've been through the process um felt they were too young felt it was too easy regretted it and are uh now in the process of funding people to get retransitioned back but and this is that to me is so insane I, I i didn't even know when i when i heard that i didn't even believe it uh, i had to you know i had to see it um but but when there's 40 percent of these of, of these people almost guaranteed to die just through taking this route in life what are we doing by worrying about their feelings rather than their life expectancy yeah i'm a good guy but, but to, uh, to answer the question to my mind why are you being forced to do this control it's the ultimate in control to make us defy our own eyes and ears and compel us to say things we know are not true you know there was a there's a case uh, of a woman who got a, a punch in the face at a protest by a trans woman um and the you know in the when it came to trial the judge told the victim to refer to her attacker as she even though it was, uh, you know, and so she was compelled to say by the courts something she knew not to be true. That's the ultimate control. We're being told yeah. to say what we know isn't true. That's control. That at, at risk of arrest. That's where we are. It really. Ninety four style. Control. It really is. So sorry to be cliche, but but. And Richard, think, any uh, thoughts on that? Well, on on one of the things I do want to touch on, um, just to take things a little bit away from that, um, is the and it really relates to identity politics. But if we broaden it out, if we look at what's happened with the the race issue in the country, we we'll look, look what's happened with with the transgender issue in the country. I mean, the, I think the trans it's called the trans community. This I think it's such a tiny, tiny minority that we yeah. probably. Should, it's, it is good to talk about the lunacy of what's been what's been discussed and what government have done, but it's such a small issue um, that it kind of it gets blown up into this big, massive, you know, elephant in the room. But it's really, really a tiny little mouse in the corner. Whereas the bigger problem that we're facing this race, this impending race war that people are trying to promote, the, the also we've got to look at, and we don't we again we touched on it last night. We've got to look at Scotland and Northern Ireland and to a certain extent Wales as well. And their thirst for for the breakup of the United Kingdom, yeah, yeah, this would be, is which would be catastrophic. 
and uh, yeah. and again, I, I want to I want to say say this to, to Anne Marie. Scotland, I believe, is ripe for a unionist party that loves Britain, um, and and that is because the, the, we were talking about it last night. You know, Ruth Davison is by no we, means a, a you know a, 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 a unionist in the truest sense of the word. Truest sense of the word. I don't think she's even the Tory leader in, in Scotland anymore. No, she's not. Is she? She's, no, um, she's gone. She's gone. She's gone a while. Gone, yeah. You know. The Tory party are very, very weak in Scotland. The working class will not vote for the Tories in Scotland. The SNP is is wreaking absolute havoc up there. They've got some really extreme people in that party who are extremely dangerous. And it's it's driven by a hatred of every, everything that is English. But when they had the last referendum, the unionists won. And that was without a proper unionist party organising up there. Mm. And I, you know, there's a huge unionist community in, in Scotland, particularly on the West Coast. And that that community has got to be ripe for the picking. It's just to throw it out there. Because Absolutely. You know, I know you can't do everything because obviously you've got so much going on at the minute. But it's just to plant that seed that we need a unionist party in Scotland. And even in Northern Ireland, I mean, Northern Ireland, um, we've got the DUP, but again, um, in my opinion, the DUP are getting weaker and weaker and weaker. Um, they roll over to almost everything that Sinn Féin, the Sinn Féin SDLP mm -hmm. Alliance axis wants. And again, Sinn Féin SDLP and the Alliance are exactly the same as the so-called progressives. And it's another word that has been hijacked. But these these far left um, liberal elitists, and they're all working together. And if the UK breaks up. That is a catastrophe for England. You know, again, t Tom asked me this last night. He said, "What do you think about England and, and English nationalism?" I says, "We've got to we've got to be civic British nationalists, and that includes the whole of the United Kingdom because it's worked fantastically well. Yes, we've had our differences, we've had our problems, but in the overall scheme of things, is that the United Kingdom has been a fantastic project, and identity politics is what caused." 40 years of mayhem in Northern Ireland. Identity politics is what is ruining Scotland and it's now doing it in England with the, with the, with the race card being played. And we've got to op oppose it at every single every single juncture that, that it comes across. So I just want to put that out there, Anne-Marie, that yeah. Northern Ireland needs for Britain and, and Scotland needs for Britain as well. It's not just a, a project that's just for the English. The no, whole of the absolutely. I've been quite active in Scotland, yeah. I mean, a lot, a lot of people are, are angry at the SNP, but you, unless you are pro breaking up the union, you're not going to win SNP. Although I did think that if you could promise a lot of them a, that you would have a UK passport with Scotland written on it, and I'm not yeah. kidding, you'd win a lot yeah. of people over. Yeah. You really would. You a would. lot of them want a Scottish passport. Um, yeah. But you're right. You're absolutely right. There isn't. And you're right. They won the vote. They won the referendum. Um, couldn't agree more. Couldn't agree more. Yeah. How, how do you personally feel about the union in terms of, of history and everything else? What does it mean to you, Amory? Is it, is, it, is it something that's important to you? Or? I would I would like the four countries all back together. I would... It's, you know, I, I personally would bring Southern Ireland back in, um, yeah. and unite unite the lot under it. That's what Richard said, wasn't it, Richard? That's and and I think actually, you'd be surprised how many people in Southern Ireland would agree with you. Really? Yeah. Because yeah. I didn't know that. I didn't know people felt like that. I mean, I'd love I I'd, I'd love that if that was an option. You know. Um, I, I, I didn't I've even got, know. I've, I've got friends in the south of Ireland who who were in Sinn Fein who got thrown out of Sinn Fein because of their views on immigration and Islamization. Mm. And they, they, they again, they've, you've got to be very careful in, in Ireland because both North and South, because there's still people that kill you for your political opinions. Mm. So, so there's not, people are not, do not speak as openly about it, but there are people in, in the South of Ireland who love what we're doing. They love that we're taking a stand. They're getting a voice as well. Of course, there's a lot of history there and, and it needs to be, if that ever happened, and I would love to see it happen, and I say that in all seriousness. I've said that before in speeches from platforms, and people thought I was joking. But I, I, I would, but well, if it was done sensitively, where there was de genuine um, equality among the nations, so that you're not in a position where where Dublin is dominated by 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 London, but you have almost like a mini. Um, I'm not going to say EU, but you have a mini community where there's there's equality between all four nations of 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 what the British Isles. I mean, it would really be the British Isles. 
And um, I think that would be a fantastic outcome for the Republic of Ireland as well, because the Republic of Ireland is basically controlled by, by, by Brussels. They do not have, they've been taken over by, by the EU and Sinn Féin, Fiona Foyle, all of those parties are now Euro fanatics. And Sinn Féin is so mm-hmm. critical because until, until sort of five or six years ago, Sinn Féin were, were, were a Eurosceptic party. But when they suddenly realised it was, it was a way to kick the Brits, they mm. suddenly flipped and, and became yeah, Euro, I find it incredible. Euro fanatic. Incredible. So I think that would be an incredible thing. Uh, and, and again, you never know. You never know what's around the corner. Don't, you really and, don't. Yeah, and, and, and if things go as badly as I think they will for the yeah. EU, um, we may well be in a position where where something along those lines, where we have a council of the Isles, it's got a lot yeah. more force than it has at the minute. Um, if the EU falls apart, what's the Republic of Ireland going to do? Well, it what's can't it stand on its to? own. It's just, no. it's, it's not going to, it's just not feasible. Exactly. Um, I know Jordan, oh, sorry, didn't mean to interrupt. No, no, go ahead, go ahead. I, I was just going to say, I know Jordan Peterson said, uh, and not that he's gone, but he said uh, that with the European Union that it had been built so quickly and on such uh, uh, weak foundations, but it had been built so quickly um, and people around the European Union, and this is certainly true for me, it's why I voted the way I did, feel so, normally you're on the hierarchy of towards the chain of power, like that's why we want to be sovereign, our government to be sovereign to us so that we, yeah, so your sovereignty is suddenly all the way in Brussels and people felt so far off this 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 ladder that they're not even on it really and uh, he was saying that this and many many other reasons meant that that every other I think he said every other experiment similar to Europe that's ever been run in terms of building a, building that kind of empire he said has always imploded very quickly and he said if if it, if it runs another 10 years it would be it'd be an achievement because he said things like this tend to come up quick and disappear very quickly as well um, because they don't have, I wouldn't call it a spiritual centre, but they don't have uh, enough meaning for people. They don't have enough meaning for people's lives. They're, they're thought of all from the top and not about and not about the structure that goes down to all the way you know, to the bottom, so to speak. Um, uh, what do you think? Do you think it's uh, uh, built to last? Do you think it's, do you think it's already creaking apart or do you think it's going to be one of these places that is going to somehow keep it together and be really annoying, just like the Conservative Party? Well, I, I mean, I, I, I mean, I'm sure I'm has been as well, but I've, I've had the, um, I don't know what you say, the misfortune of, of visiting the European Parliament. Um, thanks to Janice, Janice Atkinson, she, she invited me over and in fact, one of, one of the, uh, my good friends in the, uh, in the movement arranged all that and, and got me a, got me a, a little jolly across to the European Union that was paid for by the European Union. Another, another jolly that was paid for by the European Union, which is great. <laughs> um, so, and I went to the place and what do they call that funny looking fellow with the glasses, the Dutch guy? What's his name? Von something or other. Do you know what I mean? He's always slagging Britain off. Oh. I know who you mean. I just, it's yes. so much Yeah, 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 yeah. Von Hoofendorf or something his name. I can't remember <laughs> You know the guy, Nothing right? like it, but that was funny. Go on. I, was standing, I was standing at an elevator, and the and the doors opened, and he was standing there with his bodyguards, and I was just so tempted just to, but I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't get into a confrontation with him. But um, but it, it's a soulless place. It's awful. If you go to the British Parliament, and and you walk through the British Parliament, it's full of history. It's full of biblical imagery. Oh wow! Well, yeah, it's yeah. It's an amazing place to visit. And you yeah. go to the European Parliament, or one of the European Parliaments, because they've got two, because it's very important to move every every other Friday or whatever it is. They've had. <laughs> I mean, this is the lunacy of the place. And this is meant to be governing governing Europe. Um, so it's a soulless place, but I, I think they've made, I think that they've shown their true colours by the way they treated Italy, by the, tra- the way they treated Spain during the COVID um, pandemic, and they just left people to die when mm. they could have actually sent... The, the Germans held resources back from the the Italians that they could have sent in to save lives and of course they they made they virtue signaled and jetted a few very critically ill people across to Germany but they could have done a lot more and they didn't they held on to the stuff that they had for themselves and I hope the Italians don't forgive them for that and if the Italians pull the plug the whole thing's going to collapse guys hope so I I'm on a I'm on a promise to both Amory and to an amazing secretary Sharon um that we are out of time i'm afraid guys um 
unless uh, there's anything that you want to say or continue continue with i don't want to cut you off but um we're kind of at that time and i did make a pro i did make a promise and i don't like making prom i don't like breaking promises <laughs> Well, can I, I want to say to all my friends, I was brought up in Middlesbrough, I want to say to all my friends, well, they're probably all dead now, actually, but anyway, the, the, any of the, the descendants of my friends in Middlesbrough um, and Hartlepool in the northeast of England, get behind for Britain, get canvassing for Britain. 100%. An election. Let's see Anne-Marie walk into Parliament and just see the faces on on the establishment as, as the first for Britain MP walks into parliament um after the next general election and let's hope there's there's more than one let's hope a few other people get in there as well so that's that's what i want to say absolutely that's what i want to say as well richard and thank you well said um yeah i mean look it's it's all about it's all about it's it's here this is it it's on now is the time uh, and i'm going to put everything we've got to put everything into this and enjoy it though you know we talked about the difficult journey but it's a great journey it is. Look, we've met so many amazing people. Imagine if we didn't actually, if we hadn't met oh. each other. Imagine how oh, lovely yeah. it would be for people who can't talk about this with anyone. Yeah. And we've yeah, managed yeah. to build up a solid movement. Um, and everyone yeah. should be really proud. And it's great. It's great. I love it. I love what we're well, doing. I want people to know that, that you know, I, I've joined the, I've joined for Britain um zero news is for britain um and over the next few weeks we're going to be and i think amory would agree on this that as as much as we will love you amory it can't be a one personality party for you to win general elections so we i've heard there's quite some characters in your party so oh. We're going to be we're going to be meeting those characters. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, that says it, that says it all. So we're going to be meeting some of those characters over Good. the next uh, week or two, um, and that's not something I intend to end anytime soon. So uh, we're going to start meeting those people, getting getting to know them, um, and um, so we can, you know, really start to get to know everybody, so we know who we're voting for. And so yeah, we're right behind for Britain. Obviously, we're right behind everything Rich is doing. Hopefully, we'll all end up working together. I think we will. Well, I think that's another. I, I mean, you know, yeah, that, was meant, that was meant to be the last, the sort of last word. But I think unity is actually coming now because we've seen the horror of what's coming down the road from all the extremists, not just the the far left, but all the extremists, Islamic extremists and other extremists. And we've looked into that, the face of that, and we go, we're not going to let that happen for our country. And 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 unity is absolutely absolutely vital and uh, you know the, the more i the more i interact with with for britain and with with Anne marie and with with other members of for britain the more i like it more and more and and i, mm. I just uh, you know I'm, so, I'm, yeah. I'm getting excited about the whole the whole thing and 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 uh, I'm, you know w when we first started on this road i honestly thought ukip was the answer and and, and i was wrong and I'm, I'm, you know, humble enough to say I, I called that one wrong, but maybe that wasn't the time then. And we've all learned a lot because we've all been involved in UKIP. We've all learned how not to do it. <laughs> <laughs> That's um, true. That is you know, true. Like I said at the beginning, all those people who joined UKIP and there were thousands joined. There was people joined when you were involved in UKIP, Amory, because you were in it. There was people who joined when me and Tommy and, and, and the football lads and the veterans were involved. We got a lot of people and Jared as well. I mean, I think Jared's got to be. You know, we've got to talk to Jared as well. We got a lot of people involved in 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 that movement, and those people need a political home. And it's you know, Farage is probably going to do something. He'll probably set up something, but he's going to appeal to the shires and the and and the and 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 the 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 sort of semi-establishment people. I think our movement is a working class movement, mm. and the working class people are crying yeah. out with a passion for somebody that loves this country and is going to stand for them. And, and that transcends hundred percent. No, I, I, I agree. And, and thanks Richard. I mean, I, I won't go into to Farage, but you're right. You probably will do something, but I think there's only so many times you can come back and, and leave and come back and leave. And we need someone who's in yeah. this for the next few decades, who can put the next few decades. Who can, I can tell you now, I'm here till I'm 70. I don't, you know, this is it for me. And we've got a long road ahead. Um, we need to be looking a bit to the future. So I'm not worried about about that. I'm not worried about anything, actually. And I've believed in it from, from day one. 
and I still really do believe in it. Uh, we can we can do this. We absolutely can do it. I think so too. But no doubt about it. I think more and more people are, are, are believing it too, and that's what we what we need. Um, I will say, Amory, um, thank you for uh, being uh, kind enough to so easily take last minute changes. Uh, Richard, thank you for being here to accept those last minute changes. I really do appreciate it from both of you. And um, again, always it's an honour and a pleasure to have you both on. Really do appreciate you coming back to Two News. And um, I'm so sad to say it, but I'll see you next time. Yeah, I, I, who have you got? Sorry, I just who have you got coming on? Who have you got from? No. Oh, for, I I don't know. You, I've got to go through a list, and if I I'm te as you worked out, I'm like, terrible with names. names. Some people are uh, fabulous that so you need. I'm to terrible with names, but I I I I've heard a lot about a Graham Hawthorne. Yes, there's another Graham I've heard about. Graham, yeah, um, I know Graham, as you mean. I, I wanted to get Danny Simpson back on. Um, yeah. Because uh, well yeah we'll come back to that um, and the other people I don't know the names but I remember the okay. descriptions okay so, fair, enough, fair enough but thank you for doing that no thank no you. no not at all not at all it's my pleasure it's my pleasure thanks um, so thank you guys both very much and I'll just say to everyone thanks for watching uh, I did see a couple of super chats come up so thank you for that as well we do appreciate it and we try not to ask for it but we but we do appreciate it and we always put it straight back in the podcast. Um, my name is Storm Fury. This is Zero News, and I am calling it a day for now, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you once again for joining us. And if I could just find the outro, I could press it. We can go. Goodbye. <laughs>